Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple material for the product Simple Material for Props. This tutorial is a copy of Advanced Master Material for Props, which is the original full version of this product. Simple Material is a version with considerably fewer features. We will now create a material, so right click in your content browser, then Material, and select Material Instance. Once created, double click on it, then select the material in the Details tab where it is written parent. You have to choose the material named M Simple Props. During this tutorial, you will see me working in the Layer Parameters tab, but for this product, everything is in the Details tab. I will then apply the material instance to the mesh plane from the Place Actors tab for demonstration purposes. You can use your own mesh. The size of this plane is one meter, and as you can see, the default texture of the material instance is a two meters grid with the Unreal Engine character. This gives you a precise idea of the size of your material compared to your mesh. You can then return to the Layers tab where you will find the material parameters for the textures, UV, and others. In the Texture tab, you can choose from all types of texture maps, enabling or disabling different texture maps, as well as choosing the compression mode that we'll see in a moment. When you're disabling the albedo texture, you can choose a color instead and adjust saturation and luminosity. An important thing to know is that it's not recommended to drag the mouse to modify a value because the software will take a while to load. It's much better to click and type the value directly. This way, Unreal Engine will directly load the result. If you need to disable all the texture maps to use a single color or to create a simple material that only needs a normal map, for example, it's totally possible. You have a total control over the look of your material. You can add a second normal map called Baked Normal, useful if you have a low poly mesh and want to use a Baked Normal map from the high poly, or you can use it as a simple normal map. But don't forget that it's only linked to the UV of the mesh, so it won't use World Position or Triplanar if you activate these features in the UV tab. There are metallic and emissive textures. All the default textures maps represents the third person character called Manny. In the Material Parameters tab, you can modify the appearance of each texture map and have access to some additional material parameters. When using an emissive texture, the default value is low, so you can increase its intensity and emissive luminosity. By default, you won't have ambient occlusion because you need to enable it in your project settings. To do this, go to Project Settings and search for Allow Static Lighting. By default, the case is checked, uncheck it, and restart Unreal. If you don't want or can't use the ambient occlusion, you can use the fake ambient occlusion, which you can either activate in each material instance or directly in the material to save you from repeating the action in each material instance. Search for MF Master Props Material Global Parameters in the Content Browser and check the parameter, then save. I'm now going to show a small time lapse of the various parameters, and we'll come back to some important parameters later. When you want to use a texture map or color for the translucency, you need to change the shading model to subsurface. You can also use an opacity texture map, but you need to change the shading model to masked. Now let's take a look at the parameters in the UV tab. You have a total control over the UV, such as scale, offset, and rotation. The offset is in percentage and the rotation is in degrees. The parameter static UV scale keeps the same UV size regardless of the mesh scale, but it's important to keep the mesh scale uniform, otherwise the UV scale will become distorted. Also note that with this parameter enabled, the scale is in meters, which means that when you enter two, for example, it's two meters. 
Now let's move to the world position. This allows you to project the material in a single direction of the world. By default, it's on the Z axis. This means that on the sides of the mesh for the X and Y axis, there are texture stretching. So use world position in the right situations. The parameter object position means that the textures no longer follow the position of the world, but the position of the mesh instead. This can be especially useful for meshes that will move, such as meshes with physics. You can activate object position from the material UV tab or in global material parameters. This parameter activate object position for all the features in this layer that use world position and triplanar. It is possible to change the projection axis, such as the X or Y axis. Now let's move to triplanar. Triplanar is similar to world position, but projects the textures in the three axis of the world XYZ. Triplanar has parameters for managing the transition between the different axes, such as transition distance, contrast, the ability to change the transition mask, and choose its channel, as well as changing the scale of the mask. Triplanar also offers the possibility of adjusting the UV for the Z axis texture, named textures top and down, slash the name of the UV parameter, and the XY axis textures named texture side slash the name of the UV parameter. The parameter enable multiple textures allows you to have a texture on the top and down that is different from the one on the sides. You can use three modes of texture packing and a mode without, which is the one by default. Texture packing is used to reduce the number of texture files in order to optimize the global weight of the material. This consists of combining the texture maps into the different channels of an image file, red, green, blue, alpha, also known as RGBA. This method is used in all games and can considerably reduce the final size of your project. For the textures without texture packing, you must set the compression settings to default with sRGB checked. All you need to do is change the compression setting of the height texture to BC7 and uncheck sRGB. If you get warning messages in your material, it means that you have misconfigured some textures. For example, I intentionally set this texture to grayscale to remove the warning. You'll need to reset it to default. Don't be surprised if the warning message doesn't disappear when you return to the material instance. You need to close and reopen the material instance in order to see the updated warnings. All the texture maps must be in color, which means the default compression setting with sRGB checked, except for the normal map and the uh, anisotropy tangent map, which must be a normal map in the compression setting. The height map must be in linear color, configured as shown previously. If your normal map is in OpenGL, you need to check flip green channel because Unreal Engine works in DirectX. The opacity map is also an exception, as it must be in linear grayscale, which means in grayscale with sRGB unchecked. I've created a tool that you can use to easily pack your textures, or you can directly pack your textures if you're using your own textures from Substance Designer and Substance Painter. The tools are available on my Discord server. You just have to download them in Substance Player. For the method of texture packing named Best Compression, this allows you to pack five texture maps into only two and into three texture maps if you use translucency. When you start Substance Player for the first time, you need to select the engine, click on Direct3D11, and then OK. You can then organize the windows as you wish. Now you can import your texture into Substance Player. When you import a texture map, you see a small window with different options. Choose the corresponding texture map and repeat the action for each texture map. Hold down control plus a shift and right click to rotate the lighting. You have access to a few basic parameters to adjust your texture before exporting it. You can visualize the height with the parameter of tessellation and scale. Once your texture is ready to be exported, you need to choose the destination for the files and their names. To give your texture a name, write percent %o underscore then your name. This will give each texture map a specific name followed by the name of your texture. Uncheck all the texture maps and select only AO and NHR. You can export these two texture maps in TGA format or in PNG for the NHR. The PNG allows you to have 16 bits, 
so better quality for the normal map and height map, but the file is heavier. If you pack your textures for TO, it's the same process as for AAO. Back in Unreal to import the textures, leave the default setting for AAO, which means compression setting by default, and sRGB checked. Then for NHR, set compression to BC7 and uncheck sRGB. In the material instance, simply check best compression and import the textures. As the normal is compressed and uses only the R and G channels, there is a feature that reconstructs the B channel, therefore the Z axis of the normal map. You can control this parameter named Z correction normal. The default value is 1.5, which works perfectly most of the time, but if you want a better result, you can increase it to 2. When you increase, be careful and check your normal with buffer visualization to avoid having a normal with some glitch. If you have a problem with a normal map, you can then decrease until 1 to solve the problem. Be aware that setting a lower value reduces the intensity of the normal map, so you can compensate with the normal intensity parameter. The method Slight Compression allows you to use the same texture packing method as Quixel, but you don't have to use Quixel to use this method. The settings for Albedo and Normal Map are the same as those shown earlier for the default method without texture packing. For Texture, AORH, Quixel named this texture ARD or ORD. This texture has the same settings as the NHR texture, which means compression in BC7 and sRGB unchecked. Then check Enable Slight Compression and import the textures. And finally, the last method of texture packing, AORM, also called ORM, you must set compression settings to default with sRGB checked. To use this method, activate Slight Compression V2 and insert the textures. Whatever the method of compression, the result is identical, but you reduce the number of textures and therefore optimize your project. I will quickly explain for those who haven't understood the names of the texture maps and the methods of texture packing. The texture TO is the translucency in the RGB and the opacity in the alpha. The texture AAO is the albedo in the RGB and the ambient occlusion in the alpha. The texture NHR is the normal in the R and G channels. The height in B and roughness in alpha. The texture AORH is the ambient occlusion in the R, the roughness in the G, and the height in the B channel. And finally, the texture AORM is the ambient occlusion in the R, the roughness in the G, and the metallic in the B. Back in the parameters of the material instance, in the texture tab you have the parameter MIP bias. MIPs are similar to the level of detail of meshes, but for the textures. A MEEP is a copy of the original texture, but at half the resolution. When you change the MEEP value, this changes the distance at which the MEEP will take place. This means that with a high MEEP bias value, your texture will become blurred over a short distance from the texture. A negative MEEP bias, on the other hand, will keep the original texture resolution longer over the distance. However, this should be used with caution. This is usually a parameter you don't need to touch as the default meet bias is fine. Just know that it's there. To use virtual textures, go to Project Settings, then in the Rendering tab, check Enable Virtual Texture Support and Restart Unreal Engine. You can now go to the Texture tab, then to the Advanced tab, and check Virtual Texture Streaming, then activate it in the Material instance and insert the textures. You may see your material turn black or have a strange glitch. This is due to a bug in Unreal Engine 5.4. To resolve the bug, simply reopen your texture maps, or when you restart Unreal Engine, they will look normal. When using opacity, depending on the texture, the opacity may disappear depending on the distance. In opacity parameters, you can adjust the opacity depending on the distance. The parameters Opacity, White and Black Intensity allow you to control the thickness of the opacity when you're close. The parameters Opacity, Far, White and Black Intensity allow you to control the thickness of the opacity when you're far away. You can control the transition distance with Opacity Fade Distance and Fade Distance Offset. And the parameter Dithered Intensity allows you to control the transparency effect of the opacity when you're far away. 
Now I've created a material without texture to show you Anisotropy Tangent. Anisotropy Tangent changes the way light behaves. The effect can be seen on pans, for example. To use Anisotropy, you need to insert a texture. Then in Material Parameters, enable Anisotropy and set the intensity to 1. You can then play with the intensity to get the desired result. You also have a parameter to use the normal map of the material instead of the anisotropy map, but this parameter was implemented in UE 4.27 and is not recommended as the result is not as good as the normal map for anisotropy. We will now look at three methods for adding depth to your textures. Bump allows you to have a slight effect of depth, but you need to keep a low height intensity to have a good result. Parallax Occlusion Mapping is similar to Bump, but allows you to have more height intensity because it uses several steps compared to Bump, which uses only one step. You can increase the number of steps to improve the quality. With a high height intensity, you need more steps. Modifying the parameters Parallax Occlusion Mapping. Min and Max Steps Near Distance allows you to control the quality of parallax when you're close. The parameters Parallax Occlusion Mapping, Mine, and Max Steps Far Distance are used to optimize the parallax when you are far away. You can leave it at one step because this disables parallax, but increasing the number keeps the parallax while reducing the number of steps. You can control the distance that parallax will be optimized with the parameters Parallax Occlusion Mapping Fade Distance and Fade Distance Offset. And finally, Tessellation allows you to have the real displacement of geometry but for this you need to enable it in your project files. Go to your project folder, then config and default engine.ene. In renderer settings, paste the codes I put in the description, save, and you're done. You can then restart Unreal Engine. In the tab, Material Property Overrides Check Enable Tessellation. In Displacement Scaling, you can adjust the intensity of the height with the magnitude parameter and the offset with the center parameter. And finally, in material parameters, you can also adjust the height intensity and height offset, which are useful when you have several layers with different heights to adjust. Don't forget the tessellation only works on meshes with Nanite enabled. That's all for this tutorial. If you have appreciated, please leave a like and subscribe to be informed of the upcoming tutorials. Uh,